tried to do with uh, Alice Wonderland on various platforms is create this world of illusion. So this idea that uh, in Wonderland nothing's quite what it seems. And uh, at the same time give the player control of a uh, diverse cast um, of characters with kind of powerful abilities and use those uh, characters and abilities to kind of guide uh, and protect Alice on her journey through Wonderland. We were allowed uh, some freedom to move away from the exact step-by-step -step plot of the movie um, and, and as such that's allowed us some freedom to create some cool gaming moments that maybe don't exist in the movie, go to some locations that don't exist in the movie, um, but at the same time stay faithful to those key moments, the key encounters, the key characters and the key moments of the movie we do touch on. You know, you've got these vast array of characters, you've got the Mad Hatter, the March Hare, the Cheshire Cat, Dormouse, White Rabbit, and uh, they in themselves are all very interesting characters that you see from, this, from the original stories and from, um, from Tim Burton movie. Um, and we felt themselves would make better playable characters for the, uh, for the, for the player than, than Alice herself. And, uh, and, and by kind of making these characters have these abilities, like I said about Wonderland, nothing's quite what it seems, it doesn't really have to make that much sense that these characters live there, they have these strange abilities and it kind of all just sort of makes sense and, uh, and so I think we just sort of felt that um, maybe playing Zalus was the obvious thing to do but maybe not the best thing to do and so we just kind of wanted, when we had this freedom um, to draw away from the movie, we just wanted to try and make the best thing we could with those characters that we had. Uh, the White Rabbit, iconic sort of pocket watch, so he has uh, the ability to control time. Um, what that means is he can slow objects down, he can speed them up, he can freeze them. Um, he can also, uh, unlockable through the game, uh, use those abilities in combat. So he can freeze enemies, he can rewind them back from where they came from. Uh, you've got the Dormouse. The Dormouse's ability is combat, so she is the, the only dedicated kind of soldier. Uh, and she's a kind of pocket ninja. She you know, can jump around, spin up in the air, really, really fast soldier. You've got the March Hare, uh, who can control um, uh, move objects with telekinesis and again that also rolls out to the the kind of soldiers lift them up in the air smashing them into each other um, you've got the Cheshire Cat the classic Cheshire Cat being invisible so that one's quite an, a natural fit for him and then with the the Mad Hatter we've kind of introduced this thing called perspective and he's able to bring objects in the near ground and the, uh, and the far ground uh, distance and, and close to one another into line and sort of form up new objects so there might be uh, something big in the uh, very close to him and a very big thing but a long way away and uh, it's kind of hard to explain but uh, uh, he's able to kind of merge them together and we can again use that in a kind of special way in combat. With the Wii we've closely followed the look of the movie and I think we've done you know, a really good job of recreating what is a very unique look in the movie uh, on the Wii and so the environments and the characters look very similar to those characters you'll see when you go and see the movie. With the DS we approached it in a slightly different way, um, again we had this freedom, we wanted to create something that felt very much Alice in Wonderland and at the same time felt like Disney but coupled with Tim Burton and trying to look at making something that felt like a DS game and so that look was really you know you know we came up with it uh, as a com create completely custom look for the DS version of the game and, and, and as such you know we changed the, the gameplay slightly to suit that uh, on DS. You know what we're trying to do is um, introduce something that is innovative or different into the title and, and also at the same time try and get some freedom from the movie to use the bits from the movie and there are always bits that make great game moments but there are always bits that don't make great moments but make great movie moments and I think you know especially with Alice in Wonderland being given that freedom being uh, having access to kind of share ideas with Tim Burton early on and find out what the kind of driving factors for him were with the characters and the story and all those things and the direction he wanted to take the movie in really allowed us to put a lot of time in up front to get the ideas kind of right for the movie and, and, and being given a proper amount of time to, to make it. I think too, too much in the past maybe these things have been kind of bolted on at the end and it's like you've got to bang game out in a few months and, uh, and you're not going to get there. With this, you know, we were there really early on with Tim Burton um, as he was still forming up what the movie was going to be. Um, it just gave us time to sort of form those ideas up. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a factor of things, getting them to understand and appreciate what makes a good movie isn't necessarily a good, a good film and just having that access and that freedom uh, that we had in this, in this case really, really, really helped.